patchwork game. version. Yeah, they, they stick some patches into it, you know, take out the soldering iron, like quickly try and fix it. Doesn't really work. They sort of slowly lose, and then they get smashed in game three. So that's that's been that's been the Samsung way this season. I think that's kind of like heartwarming if you're a fan. Cause like, all right, you see something every time. You're like, all right, this part, this part over here is pretty good. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. And we're still waiting for that big triumphant victory, but. Cathartic will be what it is when it comes. Yeah, that's dangerous though, Papa Smithy. That's how CLG's fans have felt for years. CJ Entis probably as well. <laughs> no, 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 Papa. CJ at least won tournaments at one point. It's that was very a different. While ago. It's very different. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> so bands have come through Anarchy. First banning Hecarim, despite being a team that prioritizes the Hecarim, but both these teams, Ixu, QV, even when CV Max is playing, love that Hecarim. Yeah, Kuve, very dangerous on that Hecarim pickup and Gragas will be denied from Lyra. That is no surprise at all. Cassiopeia not going to be picked up by Crown. Now, that's not a champion that we've seen really Mickey play. What's your take on Luna coming back into the line? Because when we spoke off air, you thought Wraith was maybe the best laning uh, oh, choice. I, I, I didn't think that. That's what I heard from Samsung. Okay, that's, that's kind of the popular opinion. Luna in general really impressed me. The Bard in particular was something new. He seems like not necessarily a direct upgrade, but at least competitive. I guess we need more information to really work out what's the best fit for Samsung. They looked good with Wraith, especially in the 2v2, but can Luna give them maybe the, the team fight or just the, the innovation that the Bard pick maybe alluded to? Yeah, and what Samsung was saying is that Wraith, they feel, is better with Fury's aggression in the laning phase, okay. whereas Luna tends to be a bit more reserved in laning, but I think Luna has a lot of... What I saw from Luna was Good, uh, good reads on the map, ability to see things in the future, to, to make plays in advance, and to uh, predict very accurately what was going on in a way that Wraith doesn't. So I have a dream, and that is to see Mickey play Echo. Echo's available, <laughs> he's an assassin Fair. player. It's a good dream, I like your dream. That could be something we could see this series. Echo's made it through the picks and bands. Mickey's definitely the assassin player that we kind of said Easy Hoon was never gonna opt into the Echo. I don't know if you really need to commit to it as a first pick, but Samsung have shown they're very quick on picking up new things. So there's no way to know whether they've actually practiced that champion. Oh, look at this. Actually swapping out for the Maokai from the Rek'Sai at the last second. Gragas bans. The Rek'Sai would have been definitely the strongest early presence jungler. That is surprising to me, Papa Smithy, that we would see Lyra move away from that because a lot of anarchy success comes out of snowballing Mickey in the early game. And Eve has shown that Rek'Sai priority in the past. He will be happy to pick that up for sure. Cuvee as well. Of course, we talked about the fact that Rek'Sai is basically a flex pick and on the red side uh, as well. I really don't like that Maokai first, man. Your frustration is palpable. How's your frustration doing? You know, I'm all right. I'm optimistic. I'm bouncing around hoping for an echo lock in. That's kind of where I'm at in terms you're, of this you're craft. A, you're a Samsung lover, though, Papa Smithy. It's true. I'm a noted <laughs> Samsung lover. I mean, that was mostly Samsung blue that, you know, now is love it, slumming it up in Shanghai, let's say. Not quite uh, the same thing this season. But Samsung has shown flashes of the innovation that really drew me to blue and, of course, launched all of White's success. Yeah. That, and... Yes, white is definitely a product of the brain power behind blue. I will be the first one to agree with you on that. And Sivir will be locked in alongside the Maokai, so good engage from Anarchy already. Nothing too, too surprising. Some very early Corky from Fury. They must have some sort of plan right here. Honestly, if they're, if they're picking Corky, Rek'Sai in the same round of the draft, that to me says this is the top Rek'Sai and we're going to be 4-1 splitting. It's a, it is a very big possibility, but have they finally shored up those, those unclear calls where they'll decisively choose to fight when perhaps split pushing would have been smart. It feels like they're understanding the map goes from being very smart, as we saw in the TF Bard game, to opting into fights that just don't seem necessary with their win condition. Maybe it's understanding of win conditions that Samsung have most been having trouble with. Maybe it is third time's the charm with the top lane, Rek'Sai. We can dream. I think you're, they're going to go for Victor here. Uh, Victor Annie, so... Potentially bringing around some engage, and that is what they will select Annie Corky in the lane together and saving their top lane pick for last, flexing that Rek'Sai as hard as they can. And Annie has traditionally been seen as a good laning matchup against the Thresh. Definitely has the burst to deal with his relatively low base stats. I see you noticing something interesting, though. I'm wondering if there's going to be a Nidalee last here. Cassidy. Actually, cast, uh, yeah, maybe. 
uh, the Cassidy coming up against the Victor. But in terms of the jungle pick for Samsung, they could definitely have a very, very strong 4-1 split if they pick up that Nidalee, which we know is a specialty. CC in the bot lane, there's, you know, very situational CC in mid. I really like the Maokai Nidalee synergy just because, again, Twisted Advance into basically guaranteed max range spear can be a big factor. We're seeing Echo hovered again. My heart's fluttering a bit, but waiting to see if that's a reality. No, I think it's going to be Cassidy and Lee Sin. And that is what it will be locked in. So Mickey again showing some new champion play here. And Kuve just go for that Gnar, that old staple to follow up on the any engage. This will be a much more stable composition, that's for sure. It's a lot of AP, though. It's one of those traditional games where we see the cast and admit they have the Sivir to pick up some of the wave clear chops. Of course, Maokai can be helpful as well. But can they actually get things done here, Samsung? They look like they need to be controlling objectives. They need to be getting an advantage because we've already seen Kasten take over games against Victor. It was seen as a counter pick back when Victor was last enabled. It hasn't changed much, and they even have to back up wave clear to ensure they don't have any big compositional problems like CJ did yesterday against SKT. Uh, and they have the, the Lee Sin early on, so it'll be a battle between Eve and Lyra to see who could put that pressure down on the map. Now, fortunately for Samsung, they at least have the Nar Maokai matchup. If we do have the 2v2 lanes for some additional harassment up in that top side, and Corky Annie. So Samsung, good engage, good secondary engage with the Nar and the Rek'Sai, and then following up, they've got good poke too. I mean, both teams really have very well-rounded compositions right here. I just love the Anarchy have kind of done the extra things. When you have that cast in mid, one of the big things to do was always to pick a high-pressure jungler. Rek'Sai gone, Gragas banned. They go for the Lee Sin, maybe even going to be the Warrior Lee Sin to try and relieve pressure from Mickey. And it feels like Mickey, and this is their big win condition, might be able to take over the game if he gets that quiet time to farm in the early game. Well, I hope we see that Warrior Lee Sin because if you're playing Lee Sin, don't be a pansy. Play the Warrior enchantment. Go full Lee Sin or go the hell home. That's what I say, Papa Smithy. I 100% endorse your proclamation. All right, let's get into game one. Samsung bar, Samsung Thresh is locked in for Snowflower here, so we got a little bit of uh, <laughs> flavor coming through from the skin choice. I like it. I do like the uh, skin, the skin manner play whenever possible. Manners above all else. He's respecting his opponents. That's what Snowflower is doing. I think it's either intense respect or intense disrespect. <laughs> either way. It's like, look who doesn't have Mata anymore. It's you, Samsung. It's you. Look. I have a love for Luna, the Bard player in particular, and he's probably going to be not quite the same thing, but uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Both teams have strong early games. The only big outlier is this Cassidy who needs some time to get going, but already seen that matchup can do good things for Cassidy. And, you know, once the Rod of Ages power spike comes in. Yeah, it's just a matter of what he's going to be able to do early on. Obviously, the mid lane should be a very big focus for both of these junglers, trying to get that punishment down, because whoever starts snowballing out of that mid lane is going to get out of control pretty quickly, actually. And Cassidy as well, you know, there is all that magic damage from Samsung, so it's a pretty easy road to itemization for Anarchy here. Lane swap been initiated by Anarchy. Yeah. Sivir and Thresher in the top side, so the jungle follow will be happening for both teams. The 2v2 is pretty even, so I guess I'm surprised, but people do like to navigate Thresh away from Annie just because of the all-in trades at level 2 and 1. It's also the Maokai versus the Gnar, I think, aspect coming into play here where they're worried about Kuve just constantly harassing in the laning phase. Could be a little bit of an issue. Now, there is a ward at that red buff. Luna here. Already auto attack, so they know he's here. Oh! Five health on the red buff. Nicely played by Luna, though. That was very, very close. Good stun, just barely couldn't actually pick that up. He's not done harassing yet, though. Still patrolling the perimeter at this Raptor camp. Banking the gold from the Spell Thieves as well. 
People jungling on the weak side has definitely been the trend that we've seen come through. Even starting the buff, still found time to get over there and contest uh, the red buff, did the end. Well, Samsung didn't expect the lane swap to be coming in here, so they were playing more reactively, still had arguably the more successful time, as even Kuve did not find themselves quite so harassed. So the one thing that does happen here is that both supports are opened up to do some roaming. We've already mentioned Snowfire has an MVP on Thresh, and Annie probably has the most reliable roam because she has AoE CC at level one. So could potentially see either pressure being relieved in, say, a uh, inverted 2v2 situation, as it looks like Annie's going to be walking to the top. But eventual roaming likely to come in. So right there, Samsung really good timing. And, and last season, Samsung was pretty atrocious at lane swapping. But this time, I think they really had it figured out because Annie knew the timing on the jungle camps. And because Samsung started the weak side, so they knew that Anarchy wasn't going to be going for their red buff, uh, Luna and Kuve were... Ooh, nice flash. Kuve actually caught, had to flash away after the slow from the flay, I believe. Lee Sin's pathing to top, actually taking a much more direct route than Annie. There is the potential for a tower dive, but the, w the window is very small. It's going to be seen right there. They're going to land the Sonic Wave. There's the stun, flash flay, and that's it. No flash available. They might even get a second kill. It's level one from the Annie. Will auto attacks be enough? Eve's there to really pressure the turret dive, which is going to be a one for one trade. Eve has to back away. Drew a teleport from Maokai as well. But overall, a two for one trade for Anarchy. Wow. So, what I was going to say there is that Luna was actually in position to make it under that tower before the jungler and the top laner even had a chance to get into the top side, but Luna took a very circuitous route through his own jungle, and so wasn't able to make it up there in time. Had Annie been in proper position under the turret, that would have been a very different story. Now they're gonna try Flash, Twisted Advance, Eve on Burrows. Ixu may have just killed himself right there. Flash, Lyra gonna get the kill, Luna's back, however. Doesn't have stun up, though. The auto attacks are strong, very nice bounce. Gonna get at least one kill. Many ways still alive means Ixu might make it away. And that slow probably cements that. But Kuve getting the kill right there is the big, big difference against this Maokai crown. And there's a flash and the cleanse to get rid of the ignite. That cleanse flash did a lot of work in the yeah. result. It made, it made him look CC immune, basically. Wow. So Five kills in five minutes. Uh, Snowflower already doing work. I don't understand why people don't ban this champion, Papa Smithy. It drives me crazy. You Sam. mentioned he's, he's basically been making this happen on Thresh exclusively. Yes. He doesn't have this much presence on the map with any other champion. Snowflower is very good at Thresh. Just Sam. an insane bloodthirsty game. It's a, a bit of a trend, a bit of a, a difference from uh, the last particular series. Anarchy, it's going to be 2v2 action, and they're pushing up pretty aggressively as Eve is around to relieve pressure. Yeah, is Eve coming through right here. Now Songyu not going to get knocked up due to this spell shield but take some decent damage, so relatively successful game. They know that Lyra's there as well. And Fury still has both his summoners available because he's been having happy times quietly farming in bot as this massive amount of damage has been done on top. Well, it's been, it's been pretty quick paced here so far. Five kills in six minutes. I guess we shouldn't be surprised when two high pressure junglers, two very strong early Presence uh, supports as well, been roaming around, but uh, always heartening to see. I come over from the LPL where Killer Minute is basically in the uh, rule book. You have to stay above that particular clip or the match is restarted, I believe. That might be the rule <laughs> there, but uh, definitely a lot more controlled mostly in uh, Champions. Is that is that how in the rule book Lace is just there enforcing There's the, a picture of Keanu the, Reeves the, the and entertainment? Speed. Yeah, it's basically for the fan. speed. <laughs> Oh man, that's that's really harsh. So you're saying that they like explode if they reach below a certain number of kills per minute? Are there? Wow, that's dark, Papa Smithy. <laughs> <laughs> They're just sitting there looking at the counters underneath their seats. Well, I mean, they get a lot of wards down. They still fight. There must be some reason, right? <laughs> Interesting theory. I'm full of the monsters. <laughs> so. Oh boy. There hasn't been a kill for two minutes. I kind of lost interest here, Monty. What, what's, what's interesting you? Uh, Snowflower actually getting stunned right there. Standing in the gravity field for that Chaos Storm was uh, quite interesting. He 
He went for the Hail Mary hook while standing in the gravity field and got really punished for it. He walked up to a level six victor in a gravity field and uh, Okay, Mickey's just getting a bit cute, of course. Has Riffwalk available, so should be able to get away. Not sure why he's being cute. I guess he really wants to get over the ridge, but uh, Anarchy, bit of a brain explosion there. Man, I love Snowflower. He's just got such balls to even <laughs> try and make that play in the first place. I mean, the notable sees, thing... Sees the gravity field, chooses to throw a hook, assuming <laughs> that he's going to hit the victor. This is the victor and dies for it. I mean, it was, it was like a 50-50. If he actually hit that hook, he may have been able to get the kill, but sure looked silly when he didn't. Oh, nice play, though. Yeah, flayed out of the Valkyrie. Nice flash. Flash still available uniquely, but with the on the hunt pop, it's going to be a kill. Well, they donated over. They do. Let's return to Sangyo and Snowfall. You mentioned that they're a, a streaming duo, so maybe they're just flashy plays or go home, Monte Cristo. That's probably what gets them the stream viewers. <laughs> well, right there. Wow, Snowflower just walking in alone right there, but no punishment, no AD carry to do much of anything in that situation. And, you know, that was a face check of a brush there by Fury. On the bottom side, and he found the Lee Sin, he found the Sivir, or actually just the uh, Thresh in there, Sivir was in lane, and paid for it. But the result of the vertical lane swaps has meant that the mid lane has been isolated, and that isolated mid lane matchup is a small advantage for Kassen. Advantage Kassen, however big, is always a big thing. We, we normally expect a 10 to 15 CS disadvantage, but advantage Kassen really serves Anarchy well. All this pressure around the map has opened up time for Kassen to basically get an unanswered, maybe 11 minute rod of ages, given his current item timings. And one thing we can say about he didn't get the blue. What, one thing we can say about Anarchy is when they get those early leads, they they use those leads to invest in vision. And actually, what, what we saw against SK Telecom was surprisingly good shot calling in the late game. So Anarchy has typically struggled with getting an advantage early, but when they've had it, they tend to convert that lead actually pretty well. Yeah, they play well when they're winning. I think, as you mentioned, they're strategically sound when they're winning. It's just getting back into games that has almost completely eluded them at this part in their relatively young tenure. Yeah, but I'm just impressed that they, they actually can close games as well as they can, even against top teams. That's a trait that I wouldn't necessarily give to Samsung. I think Samsung is more versatile in their picks and their, their team compositions, but not quite so tight in terms of that vision or in terms of playing out snowballing snowballs to win a game. Yeah, I am and Samsung, you could very re uh, realistically level that same criticism again. So it's curious that a team like Anarchy, a very new org, can get their handle on what seems to be the thing that eludes even teams with big support stuffs. The big difference is that uh, we, we have had some pretty nice professional experience for players like Lyra and Mickey, even a little bit for Ixu, so only the bottom lane really new this season. Backside Tremor sends, spots out Cassidy, but Cassidy is pretty tanky. It's not really the burst damage unless he just sits on a gravity field, but Snowfall has already shown that there's always that possibility. Uh, Luna's sitting here waiting to flash. There we go, he's gonna flash in right now. There's the W and Mickey is just gonna get chain CC'd to death. Uses his flash peculiarly. It was never gonna be able to get away with the cooldown on the Riftwalk, still above five seconds. So falls with his flash down. That was awkward. Camp Mickey is in full effect, Papa Smithy. Camp for or camp against, that seems to be the mini game that every single Anarchy game takes for. <laughs> and they're gonna try and Camp Fury. I mean, it's Camp Fury and Camp Mickey this game. It's pretty pretty amusing. Lyra certainly has been in that bottom side quite a few times already. I guess then, let's let's assume that's the plan for both. Let's assume there was the clear call, Camp Mickey, Camp Fury. Won't it be interesting to see which of those players, those respected threats actually can come back and make something out of what has traditionally been their old win condition being abandoned and see who else either steps up or which player can make the most out of the scraps they've been given. Well, to be fair, Mickey has much more potential for carrying on a Cassidy than Fury probably does on a Corky. That's fair. But we'll see. See how it all shakes out in the end. We are just about even here as everyone starts to take a look at this next dragon. Luna and Eve once again in the brush of death. This time, Snowfire there to relieve pressure. Now, Kuve doing a lot of work in the top side, actually using his ult in that Meganar form, bullies Ixu out of lane. Could be an opportunity, though, considering the TP is up for 
Maokai, Lyra coming up. He's got the Warrior in chat. He may have the damage. Flash twisted advance. Kube going to get kicked and knocked around. Hex Drinker doesn't save him as Lyra just combos him to death. But that will open up a dragon for Samsung. Look, he probably needed to be top to relieve pressure. Interestingly, Ixu actually had a CS advantage. So the Nar hasn't necessarily been able to run through the lane. He's going to build tanks. So it isn't necessarily going to be a Black Clear or a Frozen Mallet coming out this game, at least as indicated at 13 minutes. They're going to push up top. They have the option to take the turret or they can just leave the lane to reset. Looks like they're happy to leave and extend the laning phase. Lyra, two, two, one, and three in this game. 100% kill contribution so far. He's been that major force that he needed to be on the map to get ahead with this Lee Sin. He's been playing aggressively. He's been playing it well. Smite, uh, Smite will just take that away. So Eve ends up with the enemy red buff. Samsung responding. A couple objectives in retribution for the kill on Dekuve. And Lyra's Gragas mechanics, and in general his mechanics have been a highlight, so we, I guess we shouldn't be surprised that Lee Sin is a natural extension of uh, his ability on the champion. It's, I, we've seen in the LPL, Spawn actually calls Gragas the world's best Lee Sin in terms of <laughs> just having a similar kit in terms of early damage and control, but maybe scales better with the Cinder Hulk, obviously, but Lee Sin, with the Warrior already complete, it's still very powerful. Coming back for another gank. Kuve had flash, but doesn't have to burn it at that juncture. Instead, he's going to fall back to his turret. But it is preventing Kuve from heavily harassing Ixu right here. Crown and Mickey going mano y mano in the mid lane. All the invades, I'll say the point, I'll say it again. The mid lane has been isolated, and Cassidy has been handedly winning the 1v1 matchup against Victor, which bodes badly for everyone, because Kassadin does have that takeover the game potential that we've seen many a time. He's gonna pop out and clear a pink ward, so lots of wards going down again in the bottom side. We see pretty good vision from both teams right here. Multiple pink wards out on the map so far. Sangyun going for that early Avarice Blade, so not too concerned with getting rolling early on. Ixu already with the Righteous Glory just for some Quality engages while Kube building for lane, really more than anything else. And to win lane, building for team fights is significant for Ixu. He hasn't been felt pressured enough to go the quite common build that's uh, emerged, which of course is the catalyst into the Glacial Shroud. Maybe even throwing in a Spectre's Cow, depending on how you're doing. Has been able to finish a team fight item against an opponent building for lane. So that's a big boon for Anarchy if they're looking to fight for the second dragon, which should be spawning in a few minutes' time. I don't know if they're ready for that yet. Still with the Rod of Ages coming up, trying to stack that item. It's still very early on for that particular pick, and I am very curious what he is going to be building with this Blasting Wand and the Amp Tome. Let's think about options. It's that, that's not a Snowfire gets caught. First down, Tibbers comes in. He's very low. Ignite should be enough, although with the safeguard. With the safeguard lives on probably 40 health. Yeah, very low. I mean, there are only so many options. It's either a Rylize or a Void Staff, either of which is sort of weird. I guess maybe sees the magic resist stacking on Abyssal Scepter, and you can see magic resist stacking on Cuvee. So I don't know about rushing a Void Second. Fake has been one to build early Void Staffs, but this is really peculiar. I'd say build an Abyssal. Honestly, if you need a little bit more magic penetration early. And look, maybe we're being too reductive. Maybe we're just talking about Abyssal and Amarillo and Omicron coming slowly. Of course, doesn't need to necessarily build an item that builds out of both those AP options. Maybe just looking for as much wave clear as possible early. Because, of course, flat AP, maxing the force pulse first should be good, smart wave clear. I'm a little bit worried about that. I think it's actually a void staff, and that... That makes me nervous, Papa Smithy. Okay. That, that makes me a bit nervous. I'm not sure how that build is actually going to be too functional. So if you see a fiendish codex and a, an abyssal, you'll be happy? Yes. Okay. Well, happy, happier. <laughs> the trade's really starting to stick for Mickey. They're very one-sided. Once again, ops into standing on the gravity field. Not interested in the CC effects there whatsoever. Maybe it's because there's so much cavalry around Lyra and he was, Snowflower. He was trying to bait Crown into an all-in, and there we go. Lyra's going to come through, forces that flash out, but Lyra pays for it. Eve with the follow-up. Kuve going to TP in at the same time. Not uh, really much they can take right here, besides maybe a top lane turret with that Corky, but their bottom is currently undefended. That's going to be 
Song Yoon backing off, but a really deep dive there turned around by a flash from Crown. The spider senses were obviously tingling to have all those defensive options uh, channeling straight away. And yeah, as you mentioned, the difference between Lyra having flash and not was about 20 seconds. Still went for the engage, got cute, hoped he was in the shot. We already saw Bengi fall into that trap, but uh, not today from Crown. Not today indeed. And no more turrets though, still a minute until Dragon. So not very, not really a high risk play there from Lyra. Can't blame him for trying it, really. He's going for Hex Drinker. Holy cow, an aggressive Lee Sin build. And this was the cornerstones of a standard Lee Sin build in previous metas. It was the Hex Drinker uh, Warrior Enchant, or whatever the equivalent was at that time, and the Sidestone. It's the sort of thing that uh, your former jungler over on CLG would be building on the Lee Sin. It's definitely fallen out of the meta. We don't see that as much from either Dexter or any of those junglers, but. Uh, was off just a lot of early dueling, and that's what Anarchy are trying to do. Early power spikes to complement their Cassidy. Yeah, it looks like the on the hunt blown very early from Sung. He had one less weapon for Anarchy when it comes to contesting this dragon right now. It's going to be a big problem not to have the Civil Ult available. As this comes up, Samsung looking for dragon number two. They have the wards down. They're going to start it off. Your worst fears are confirmed. Void stuff is already complete from Mickey. Any uh, words, Monty? No, I just think it's really not very good this early on in the game. Kuve about to go Meganar. The timing couldn't be better. And there's a flash right onto Ixu. Maybe not wanting to go for that. Maokai, Luna gets kicked out. Kuve starts getting focused right in the front lines. He's going to go down in Meganar form. Eve trying to follow up Fury with a lot of rockets. The crown, it'll be focused as well. They just collapse on him. And honestly, that was Luna just jumping the gun there on the invade. Yeah, he, he jumped the gun on the engage. In fact, Mickey was not grouped the whole fight. Finally showed up for the 5v5 after losing the objective. Strange to see the all-in onto Maokai of all people. Very, very squishy as the Annie will die incidentally in the front line. Then both Eve and Fury try and kill Lyra, who's very, very low. But they're splitting their threats. They're not fighting with the Victor, and Victor's not maneuverable. He doesn't have Fury Boots. He doesn't necessarily have any mobility to deal with the mobile assassins coming through from Anarchy. Just a weird team fight from Samsung. Also, Fury not even grouped up with the team there either, making it doubly hard as Fury flashes out of Mickey's engage. Yeah, the buy timing from Mickey was poor if they were actually looking to commit for Dragon, but they gave it up, they didn't get poked out, and then just kind of fell into the lap of a newly shopped Void Staff Cassidy, who could just deal with the team fight that ensued. Wow. Well, really questionable engage from Luna right there. Praised him earlier for his Bard engages, but his Annie hasn't really lived up to that expectation. They still got the Dragon, though, in the end even if they did fall behind a little bit in terms of that total gold. You can tell from some of the item builds that these Anarchy players have differing identities in team fights. We look at Lyra building purely magic resist. We see Ixu building purely armor. If they can trap up the threats they're looking for, they could actually be some interesting interactions despite two frontliners building very, very differently. Well, I don't think you need <clears throat> as much armor as Ixu has in this game, frankly. A Frozen Heart gives him some offensive capabilities, of course, more CC, has good base values, but it's strange to see both frontliners going very opposing tank builds. Yeah, very, very odd with this Corky that Maokai would be this concerned with getting armor, especially when it's Frozen Heart and Ninja Tabby here. You have to think that there's going to be a more efficient build for Ixu to use. I mean, it makes him immune to damage from, let's say, like Nah, for example, but he was already doing fine, not even building for lane, building a Righteous Glory, so... It's one of those situations where sometimes you see teams stack armor and then just dive the magic damage, but for that to be the differing builds from both dive threats, that's what caught my eye. Crown going for that Faker-style Lich Bane Victor build, third core item. Faker. For him, and that's that's great against this Cassidy. Does Faker go for no Morella Nomicon, though? No CDR? Because the no CDR is the big surprise to me. Of course, regular wave clear with the death ray is very possible the moment that you get the uh, 
e augment, but if you don't have any CDR, Wavecut can be more difficult. He's the only real reliable Wavecut. Are we seeing turret trades here? It seems like we you are. You should not trade two Sheen, make these two Sheen trades, and they're going to not even make the TP in the end. TP doesn't go through, so TP's down as well. The defensive teleport will work, although it's cancelled. Well, this game has gotten really awkward. Odd. I'm actually surprised that Samsung was willing to back off right there. Seems to me they could have kept going until someone actually stopped them. Going to use the Rek'Sai Void Rush, so they will trade and get a tier two for their troubles. It's very defensive to take the second, the inner turret, then back away completely and shop and then come back up. They didn't even go for an aggressive retreat. That's a purely defensive one, which opens up Anarchy to move as five and monopolize vision wherever they choose to prioritize. Yeah, they could have gone through the topside jungle of Anarchy and really tried to make a play, cut them off, doing something right there. Use the fact that they were a little bit in this power spike again. Two Sheens, they could have easily won a base race in that case as well. WTF two sheens. Yeah, WTF two sheens indeed. Not pushing that advantage particularly well. well they've got another dragon coming up though. They're going to be in a good place to contest it. That Lich Bane nearly done as well. We'll see if Crown shops and gets it. He will right now. It's a lot of power in the first burst, but not quite the cooldowns to necessarily get lots of little sheen trades in. The Death Ray has, I believe, about a nine second flat cooldown. The Q gets lower, but Lich Bane has a 1.5 second innate an internal cooldown. He just doesn't have the ability to proc that unless he spaces out his CC, but I just don't, don't see that being possible. Yeah. Well... Initial burst, though, and the damage to structures cannot be denied. I'm curious to see what he builds next to deal with that. Does have quite a few options. So Kuve doesn't have TP, neither does Iksu after that very awkward pseudo base race that we had earlier. Uh, but the line, the wave is pressured so far forward for Samsung that Kuve has a ton of freedom to move to the enemy jungle, maybe get a flank right here, push them in from behind. That's honestly a pretty similar story for Anarchy in their bot lane. Basically, equal positions for the minion waves across the map for both teams. It's opened up Kassadin to Rome with teleports not being up. No one better to send the sideways than the Kassadin to both pick up farm and pressure whoever is sent to deal with it. Yeah, Fury has to back off as well from the Kassadin, so they're not able to get that same amount of pressure, really. So, will Kuve just recall right now, head out? Or is he just going to walk directly over there? Doesn't want to get any more purchases. Getting close to a rando and Zoven. The difference with the two teams is that Anarchy were fighting around the dragon as they pushed up. QV doesn't have teleport yet. They're going to have to give away this dragon. That's just the reality of where they were putting their resources. Samsung's resources gave them Baron control, but Baron not a realistic objective at 25 minutes. Anarchy pushing up in their bottom lane gave them this dragon to, equally, to easily just back away from and pick up their first one, which of course the stats very relevant at 25 minutes. Yep, absolutely. And we talked about Anarchy Superior Shot Calling. They came out on top right there, bouncing back from that weird push that they made in the mid lane. Both teams obviously recognizing this is a very even game. It's reflected in the gold, the turrets, everything. Very, very even. Snowfire comes for one of his traditional roams, but uh, nothing to be got in this situation. I feel like extending the game only opens things up for Anarchy and specifically Mickey, so I'm looking for Samsung to make a decisive call. They've been known to do that. Whether they're right or not has definitely been not even open to debate. It's often been more wrong than correct, but they cannot just let Anarchy find farm on their carries and opt into a late game against the Cassidy. Well, still, it... This is really up to Mickey to carry because obviously with that tanky top, not going to be outputting as much damage. Lyra's going to fall behind the further this game goes on and the tankier everyone else gets. That lack of CC and presence comparatively to the Rek'Sai. So Mickey, he's got the Sivir buff. He has to do work on this Cassidy. They're actually just going to start a Baron right now. They blacked out the vision, and look at that. Luna's recall. He's going to be free. Yep, Luna's recall, and they have nobody even close. Rek'Sai tunnels in, but it's only tunneling into the Wraiths. Right now, he's going to have the Tremor Sense to see some action around Baron, but he's going to be surprised to find that it's already gone. It is already gone. Eve very quickly focused 
Snowflower coming up with the hook, and now they are on the run towards the opponents. They did pop the Righteous Glory, they did pop the Sivirold, but they couldn't find any other kills. And Anarchy playing around their vision, having the vision in the right areas, having vision around the Dragon as they pushed up in the bottom lane. Now, basically rotating that, Victor in the bottom lane just pushing, knew they had the ward supremacy around Baron and took it down. And now here come the towers falling immediately afterwards. They transition well into this side wave, pushing in the top lane to take a tier two. That'll be tower number five. And QV is four, rather. And QV in the bot lane's racing. He's racing against a sivered up Baron comp. Well, that is. Not really where you want to be if you're Cuvee right now. I could have said Baron up Sivir comp, but I went the other way for some reason. Sivered up Baron comp. I wish I had a Baron comp. Did you? Do you? Yeah. It'd be really powerful. I mean, I wouldn't spawn until 20 minutes, but I'm pretty sure with a Baron comp, I could totally take the game at 20 minutes. Is that the one time when you'd be happy for Riot to increase the time <laughs> on the turret reinforcements to about 20 minutes, perhaps? Yeah, I think that... That sounds about right. The no rush till 20 Baron composition. Just stay in your base until 20 minutes, building your Baron. That sounds like my history with Starcraft. <laughs> Were you one of those guys? Just oh, yes. Sitting, I was super bad. Sitting sitting in your base, building battle cruisers. But they do so much damage. <laughs> but Yamato cannons. <laughs> no were rush you, 20, were, please. Were you a Terran player? No, I liked Botos. Oh, OK. So you were just building carriers then. I see how it is. That was the fun. <laughs> I can't believe you. No rush till 20. Turtle with your photon cannons and your carriers. You know I was leaning into a joke here, Monty, <laughs> so perhaps I was just extending <laughs> the metaphor. Mickey's no. got the Zonias that he was looking to get, and suddenly Merc treads. He's got a full build. No CDR, so maybe not the same level of backline threat, but uh, man, Samsung w were in a really close spot, and now it doesn't feel close at all. Well, they still have a lot of power, but it is going to be hard, especially that locket done now. The Corky and the Victor, and no other real substantial sources of damage. And this push, very hard. They're actually just going to pile on through. They find Crown, who's standing right in the back. He's going to keep kiting out, but it's not going to be enough. Sung Yoon going to pick up the first kill onto Luna, and Samsung desperately trying to defend Ixu, just taking the turret right now, and that is going to be a couple of kills in favor of Anarchy. Mickey with a kill himself. More hooks flying out from Snowflower. And man, you just got to take this guy's thresh away. And you just got to have to respect the fact that Anarchy are the one team to really make those decisive engages. They're happy to tear it up, but they feel powerful. Cuve turns into Megana. Double, double now ultimate significant. Remember, in the back line, Corky and Crown are free hitting. But with Lee Sin with the kick, it won't matter. Oh, wow. Lyra going back in again. That flash will be his doom, but pretty fancy footwork on that Lee Sin right there, flying from one target to the next. And if you just delay everything, it's three kills for the inhibitors. They do break the base from the dive. It's a very successful dive. It's the assertive play that eludes a lot of teams. But again, Anarchy seems to do with ease. Yeah, they do. Well, backing off right now. Samsung really in trouble at this stage. Unlikely to come back in this one. Eve actually just trying to delay. They want to make sure that perhaps they can get that inhibitor turret with the wave in the top side. Not sure they're going to be so lucky, but what they're doing certainly isn't hurting. And they're also opening up a possibility for a dragon right now. Only a third dragon is not a big boon. Only Snowflower available to clear these minions. They won't take out the turret, but do a lot of chip damage. It does have some uh, healing, though, so we'll start to get healthier unless Samsung can engineer a split push to try and push down the last bit. They're in excellent position to pick up their third dragon, but Lyra's over-leveled to Eve, and multiple people are coming in to try and stop it. Yeah, they are. So Lyra wants to hit this Sonic Wave, does get it onto Eve. Eve taking a fairly good bit of damage, and they are the, just going to back off. Eve secures number three. Yeah, if it was number four or five, definitely there was the option to go for the steal with the safeguard, but thought better of it. It's only a third dragon. The rotational power is probably not going to be a big deal. They have Sivir when they're looking to make that decisive engage or flank. So, look, it's never ideal to give away a third dragon, but in this situation, they're so far ahead, they're opting into a fight. Oh, just losing a member, that could have been the start of a swing for Samsung. Yeah, you really don't want to give people up right now when the game is on the line, when you can push forward and start to close this gold gap that has developed Samsung. 
On the ropes now, though, this Cassidy, very, very scary. Nah has to be dealing with the minion wave, and but can he control his rage? Look, he's already going to hit Mega Nah. So of course you have the 15-second uh, window where he's, when he's tired, and of course just the timer when he's in Mega Nah. So it's about 30 seconds before you can start building rage again. The moment that you turn into Mega Nah, that's something that Anakin can work around. Not sure if they're actually cognizant of that, but they certainly are pushing aggressively into top. Well, there's that 30-second timer going to start now for that Rage Bar. Still cleared out pretty easily, though, by the Death Ray and the Rockets. That is a factor for Anarchy, as they have so many melee champions that getting in range to Siege can be problematic. Eve with the hook, though, finds a face full of damage right in front of that tower. Song Yun takes a little bit of poke, blocks some of it with his Spell Shield. Kuve finally finds a build up. The Nar bar again, it's about half, so should be flexible to have that available if we do see another dive, which Anarchy has already shown that they're more than comfortable to do. As long as Maokai is the one tanking the aggro, they can dive for days, and Lyra awkwardly even as Lee Sin pushing, but there's the ultimate. Yeah, they're going to try and dive this. Mickey finds Luna immediately, and there is Ixu right into the mix. Mickey with the Sonya's Hourglass in the middle of the composition. Kube in the back line, but he gets focused down. Mickey dies, however to Eve, so both players in the mix, and there is Eve, he's still going in. Crown is very high HP, landing a lot of those Qs, so Mickey just gets destroyed after that Zonia's Hourglass. Anarchy still pushing forward, though. They still have Super Minions pushing the they need to be dealt with, even as melee champions or short-range champions, they have threat. The inhibitor's down to about 300 health, but it looks like finally Samsung Galaxy might have been able to chase them away. Wow, holding right there. Mickey and Ixu moving too forward on that engage for anyone to follow up. They're still going to go for a man down Baron. Of course, Cassidy not really going to add too much damage to the Baron in the first place. They just had no option, Samsung Galaxy, to get Vision anywhere near this area. They're starting to push up Vision, but it's not even at their Raptors yet. Rek'Sai. Tunnels in, Baron's at 2,000 health. There is actually a steal option here, but doesn't know or doesn't recognize it right to the last minute. And second Baron on spawn by Anarchy. It wasn't really a steal because Eve had to use tunnel to get in range of the pit. Doesn't have flash either. Doesn't have flash. Wouldn't have that tunnel cooldown up so quickly, unfortunately for Eve. Chose to use the tunnel to get there a little bit earlier to see if he could find that timing, but it was just too far down already. And the second Baron might be enough to just take this game for Anarchy, who've honestly played it pretty much textbook. Yeah, can't fold Anarchy what they've done here. They've gotten things their way this entire game so far. Snowflower has been that big threat on the map. And Mickey has really delivered on this Cassidy, just slowly scaling into the late game. Doesn't seem to be any big item timings or factors that can cause Samsung guys to get back into the game. We haven't seen the big Annie ult into Naro, for example, the big Wombo combo. If they can take out either Sung Yoon or Mickey, it's definitely a two threat comp. Maybe that's the hope, but Anarchy are not leaving anything to chance. They're recklessly diving onto priority targets and ensuring there's no setup for the big engage from Samsung. And he dropped right there. It's going to miss everyone. Lyra has to flash out the engage, time. however, and now they're coming back in. Kube's here. His Narbar is nearly full, but he can't get enraged before that bar goes down. Song Yoon just solos out Luna on the side. Luna not having a good game tonight. A lot of missed anti stuns, a lot of miss ults. And then poor positioning leads to his death. And now it's time for the base to be completely eradicated. The tutorial approach being taken by Anakin. And why not? They're waiting for minions to push into the bottom side. An inhibitor turret, there's nothing they can do. They have to respect both Mickey and Sung Yoon. And this should be the decisive final push. Should be indeed Mickey. Gets that void. Okay, here we go. Eve just going to... Try and get onto Ixu right here. Ixu tanking a turret. He's taking a lot of damage. Kube still throwing boomerangs in. Snowflower is actually going to die to Kube. They still have a lot of turret aggro. I don't know if Anarchy is actually going to have the HP to see this game out. Sanyu nearly dying. Mickey in the back does pop the Zonius, but there's nothing else there for him. He's going to get focused down and killed. They tanked way too many turret shots over the course of that fight. Yeah, after their clean turret diving, that one was definitely a pair of turrets too far, such as the Nexus turret's power. They pick up one of the Nexus turrets and back away, so still no real window back into the game from Samsung Galaxy, but given their first 37 minutes, that was sloppy from Anakin. 
Yeah, they they definitely could have played that much more patiently with Song Yu and Sivir not trying to dive behind the tier two turrets and cut them off. Anarchy trying to get a little bit fancy right there, pad their KDAs as they win the game, but instead it is reversed on them. Three inhibitors down, still extraordinarily unlikely that Samsung is going to be able to come back, but they could get four dragons. And Katie Rolster versus IM looms large in our memories that it is conceivable for them to come back, just unlikely. Very, very unlikely. They're still taking every shot they have, though. Kuve in the base. Kuve with teleport. And his Narbar is full. He is Meganar right now. Will he actually TP in? Lyra gets focused early. Even Lyra low. And there's Kuve with a Nar onto Sonyu in the back. Sonyu's getting stunned and actually just chained. Corky, Fury cleaning up. Holy cow. But Mickey is there. Mickey is still with the damage. And Ixu. Oh man, Fury so close. Kuve, there's no one to stop the super minions, so an apocalyptic final battle that Anarchy goes even in, gets the double kill, but that's gonna be it. The minions do the dirty work, Monte Cristo. Take out the game. You can opt into a fight with three inhibitors down. Samsung tried it. Look, the fight actually went pretty well, but the result was not in doubt. Yeah, Fury doing a lot of work in spite of how hard of a time he had earlier in this game. Anarchy will take game one. Just pretty smooth sailing, honestly, against Samsung. And a lot of that was powered up by Lyra's very good early game jungling. And if you're going to make a rookie mistake, which what it was when they dived into the double turrets, look, at least you have three inhibitors down and plenty of other options to finish the game. So a bit sloppy, but as you mentioned, Anarchy, they played around their points of control, i.e. fighting around the dragon and cutting back to it when they were spit pushing in bottom, and then just taking the Baron when it was up for offer. Other teams might have not been so decisive around the Baron, which is what really tipped this game over the edge. Champion falling through, blue side is better, but when it's this unique situation where it feels like the first couple of rotations are getting priority picks, red side, which also has the last pick for a counter pick, seems to come up strong. Yeah, the early quirky from Samsung last time was weird on red side as well. And it's especially odd because they opted into the Corky against a Maokai, which when you have a tank that big can be difficult to burst down. This time, Samsung is just going to ban the Maokai straight up. So Hecarim was actually banned by Anarchy last game. Will they have to do that against QV as well? There'll be two top lane bans, potentially freeing up a priority selection for one of the other players. Callista banned on the blue side. Interesting. Is Fury not much of a Callista player? No, Fury could definitely play Callista. It's surprising because a lot of the AD carry priority teams really like to have that Callista for obvious reasons. Your ability to snowball out of the laning phase is very strong. But this case, it's going to be banned on blue side. What does Samsung want here is the question. Do they want that Alistair? Do they want the Gragas? They're going to get one. Finally, the Thresh ban. I think that is quite wise. And maybe even the Hecarim will emerge as a first pick, given the priority in this particular series. Maybe Siva Hecarim could be put forward, which has actually been a winning combination for Anarchy, but no guarantees. I don't think the Hecarim is going to be prioritized because the Gnar is still up, and Kuve will play that champion, and Hecarim is still very vulnerable to that frozen Mallet Gnar build. Sure. You have to be really worried about that as a Hecarim player. Siver going to be the ban, so that will be a first pick. Gragas Alistair goes over to Anarchy in this place. It, in this case, it was banned by Anarchy in the last game. So pretty nice takeaways right there. A lot of power on the Alistair Rek'Sai as a duo, and it's locked in. And you have to take that Rek'Sai just because you don't know whether Samsung's going to take the Rek'Sai as well as the Gragas in the next side. So normally you may not take a jungler there, but this time they opt to. They could take the victory again if they want it. It's weird that Fury has been putting so much priority on early rotation Corkies. And we see, for example, Prey do this on Kuta, because that's a little bit different. They have a different identity. It fills a slightly different role for uh, in that team. But for them to lock it in, but there is the Bard. So at least we see the Bard, but so much priority on Corky. And it's weird to me, too, because when I think about my favorite games that Fury plays, he plays Lucian. He's really good at Lucian and at getting a lead and bullying out lanes. So going for the Corky here, I have to say, I think it's a bit questionable. Uh, they can pick the Hecarim here if they're confident in playing it into the Gnar. And they're going to grab Lucian as a big lane bully. Lucian Alistair, there's a lot of kill pressure in that lane. Hecarim 
He is locked in for Ixu. And if you're crowned, you're probably going to feel very pressured to lock in Victor as a blind pick mid laner. Probably the safest of the choice choices available. Azir also looms as a decent mid lane choice. But Snowflower has got his pick of assassins, already flashed the echo. It was Crown that ran into Goong's uh, Zed in the previous series and really demolished that Victor. Yeah, I don't know if Victor is the best here. You know Mickey plays Zed. You know Mickey plays uh, Ari. I think Azir is definitely the better choice uh, when you don't know what the hell he's going to be doing. Of course, the Azir is weak to that Zed. The only Zed post Deathmark nerf, though, that we've seen has been Goo. Yeah. It was on the winning side, again, against Crown on Victor. So looks like he's not going to opt into what he expects to be an Assassin matchup on the Victor. Going to default to the Azir instead, and you just have to wonder, where does Mickey want to go with this pick? Assassin is what's screaming out for. Victor is the obvious choice. Uh, sorry, uh, Zed is the obvious choice. I think that they just need to go for that backline threat here, and the matchup for Zed is so favorable. And we know all the way back from when Mickey was playing on WE Academy, when he was back in China playing in the LSPL, that Zed has been his go-to. If Look, Mickey is an excellent Zed player. Zed is a thorn the side of Azir. Najin left open Zed, and okay, it was on patch 5.8, I believe. It wasn't the, quite the same Zed, but look, Zed's outplays. His defensive options with his ultimate may have gone down, but his damage numbers very much the same. And here's what here's what I question, Papa. Is the Corky pick locked them into a more high damage mid laner in that Azir? What happens if they early pick that Lucian, and then instead they're allowed to play Lulu, which is something we know Crown plays out of the mid lane? I think that is a lot safer bet for a blue side draft than what we see from Anarchy right here, because that Zed, it is always in the back of your mind when you're playing against Mickey. And it reminds me of when Jynair actually opted into that Lulu comp in their series uh, a couple of days ago. On the blue side, as you mentioned, Assassin last picks have become very common, even Goon going towards that Zed, and we see Zed from Mickey. Something exciting, we saw a nice gasp from the crowd. A lot of potential in this pick and a good laning matchup for Zed. Well, that's because the one time we saw Mickey Zed this season, it was in that final game versus Najin. He went something like 10-1-10 and 10 on that champion. Absolutely crushed Goom. 20 uh, KDA. Yeah, and he played that in a skill matchup too. He was playing against Goom's LeBlanc. Not in a matchup that is heavily tilted in favor of Zed like this Azir. While I wouldn't say the draft is necessarily heavily tilted towards Anarchy, they've got a lot of comfort. They have an assassin for Mickey, and they're coming off a victory. So a lot of comfort between the Hecarim and Zed for their solo laners. Things looking good for Anarchy. Yeah, they definitely are. And Lyra doesn't even have to pay attention to his bottom lane here at all. He can just sit on the top side of the map, work around the Zed, work around the Hecarim. So Anarchy here has some a, a lot of options for just safely coming out of this laning phase. We're going to get into the game now and see if Samsung can withstand the storm of Mickey Zed. See if they can. Well, all eyes are going to be on this mid lane. Crown must feel comfortable because this was a very obvious opportunity. Sick dance battles possible between the Azir and the Zed. Everybody is a dance party. Got shadows, got soldiers. So many choices in the mid lane right here. So let's come back to the draft. It's one thing that you made a big point about was the fact that they kind of trapped themselves into having to pick something higher damage than, say, for example, the Lulu. Let's continue the trap. Remember, we're expecting a Zed split push. That's just generally how Zed's playstyle evolves towards the mid to late game. Rumble is one of the worst people you can send against a split push. He usually wants to build for team fights unless he's super ahead. Can't even itemize into a Zonyas till 30, 35 minutes. Has to build the magic penetration, potentially even the completed Leandries early. Zed even has a favorable split push. It's not against a Cinder Hulk tank, he's against a Rumble. So setting up a situation where Mickey's in prime position to take over the game on Zed, scary. You're not even considering either the fact that they can 1-3-1 one, one with a Hecarim if Hecarim gets items. True. So it's not even one person they're going to have to worry about the split push. It's two. 
Now, that does open up a possibility that Samsung comes in with the Corky and the Azir for a very strong siege. Or the Bard Dream comes through, Monte Cristo. That's right, the Bard Dream of rapid rotations. Not quite the TF, so it's going to rely on the teleport plays and just general map mobility, but uh, it's going to rely a lot on making advantage of what looks to, as you say, loom to be a very, very strong 1-3-1 one, one push. Yeah, there, there, like, there is that counterplay, though, of course, with the Bard. And Luna doing a lot of harassment work right here. There's the smite, and there's a double stun. Kuve and Eve not finding themselves so thoroughly harassed there by Snowflower. Snowflower on a melee support, maybe a little bit difficult to get the auto attacks in. No uh, spell thieves procs to pick up. So definitely only an all-in when it comes to the contest rather than the easy poking that's options for Luna. And the Bard in that lane swap. Going to be quite good here, actually. That's going to free up a lot of time for Bard to move on the map if he wants, collect those chimes, and try and make plays on the lane. I mean, Bard is a decent laner, but he's he's not top tier by any means, and certainly dodging that Lucian matchup pre-6 is a blessing for Fury and Luna. And honestly, his laning gets better as he gets to be less accountable and pick up the chimes. If he comes into lane with 10, 15, 20 chimes, starts to get more damage and utility from the slows on his auto attacks becomes a better laner. So it's ironic that he needs to leave lane to become a better laner, but that's just how Bard rolls. Yeah, indeed. Well, Snowflower just going to recall right here. They're going to set up in the bottom side of the map. Mass recalls coming in this time from Anarchy. Rumble already TPing in the top side. No threat up there to him at all. Luna there to back him up in case it's necessary. Just going to continue laning. Things very quiet across the board. The freeze has actually been initiated by Fury, so we're probably going to see Anarchy send multiple members bottom to end that freeze. Yeah, already ended in the top side. Luna just there to back the rumble up if necessary. No one's actually seen him yet in the top of the map, so I'm sure they suspect he's there, but it's not a guarantee. That's going to sow some seeds of doubt into the minds of Anarchy. Meanwhile, Crown continues to push forward. And he's got the backup from Eve just in case anything happens. Now they see Snowflower, so they'll be less worried about that mid lane. Awkwardly uses his machine gun for harass, which does push the wave a little bit in bottom as well. So probably gonna help to end help help to end that freeze even earlier than he would have wanted to. We're not expecting this mid lane matchup to really start going crazy places till certainly level six, but some item timings are hit by Mickey, but he's at least keeping very competitive in the farm stacks. Yeah, this is where you have to worry about getting poked and zoned out from Azir. I mean, obviously Zed not having those resources and having that ranged Q does make farming not as difficult as a lot of other melee champions in that mid lane against a, an Azir, but still nice that he's keeping within a couple. That's why I'm excited to see Echo finally hit competitive play in the mid lane. And Coco did a good job laning him yesterday, but I want to see Echo's development just because as an assassin, uniquely has excellent backline wave because specifically able to push up with that time winder. Level 9 in the Merlinomicon instantly uh, clears the backline. It's not something that a lot of champions can do. Assassins especially very rarely get access to ranged wave play. Yeah. Except for Zed. Even then, not going to clear the backline in one particular spell combination. Yeah, that's true. Okay, well, getting closer to that level six, but just farming for the moment. Let's wait till the fireworks start. We'll see what Snowflower can do with some of these roams on the map. He's going to get seen right there by the wolf spirit. Interesting to see if you actually prioritize smiting the wolves in a lane swap more than necessarily in other situations. Always want that Gromp of your jungler likely going to be building up big health values, but it just did so much extra work. Speaking of work, Snowfire comes in. And they force the flash immediately, turn it around with the double stun, get some damage down. But just a summoner blown right there from Kuve as three people come up to the top side, and they just don't have enough pressure at bottom. Actually, Sanyu gets stunned into a minion right there. Samsung, in terms of the health fighters, handedly won a 2v3 situation. So nice mechanics. Probably shouldn't be a surprise. You already anointed Luna as, so far, the most impressive bard we've seen in competitive play. Yeah, he's only played a couple games, though, so got a lot of bard work left. And, you know, we haven't seen some of these bards that people think are very terrifying, like Sweet's Bard from Jyn'Air, which we saw banned game after game after game and have yet to actually 
see debut in the professional scene. And now they've gone to the extent of just taking him off the roster, you know, on the subs bench with uh, Che playing instead. So one day the sweet bard will come out. <laughs> we can hope. And Gorilla is really wasn't that impressive when we saw him play it, even though I know he's been practicing it a lot in solo queue. And he's, I believe, maintaining top six solo queue at minimum, so maybe those mechanics will finally come up well. But look, he's playing the Karma, and that's still interesting to see. I love his uh, Karma play. It's fascinating, but you know, Crown just trying to play safe. Got all the minions, yeah. nice mechanics. Yeah. Good clearing there of the wave. Farming under that tower. Luna wants to just take out this ward they're trying to prevent Vicky from feeling comfortable about an all-in, but Lyra with a cute little invade onto the blue buff. He's going to be able to get it before actually Eve can get there. He saw the support on the other side, and that is going to be... Oh! Oh, he took it with the barrel. Lyra didn't have smite up, so Eve turning it around. That's a that's a really important pickup right there, especially if they can go and contest the enemy blue buff as a result of this. No mid laners really having any items at this stage. I don't know if Lyra takes bladed armor for the percentage health damage to neutrals, but that buff hit one health, Monte Cristo. Yeah. In fact, I think it was a bit of a late of an activation of the barrel roll, actually. I think Eve could have hit that sooner and still managed to pick up the kill onto the blue buff. But how does Samsung want to play this blue now that it's available? They haven't sent anybody back yet, but Fury's at level six and he's got that sheen. He's gonna be pretty comfortable in the lane. And they have a ward at the Gromp, so they may see anyone who goes up there and they're gonna see that Rek'Sai, I believe. I think Anarchy are doing a lot of play around mid lane. Notably, neither of these mid laners have been able to shock it. You can see with these gold values, over 2,200 gold for both of them. Crown already knows his blue buff's been stolen away. Doesn't have much mana sustained against a no resource champion. I think his health bar may not be full, but he's happy to just keep pushing this wave in and go back for a massive first shot. Well, and this, this raises the question for Crown. When you don't have that blue buff right now and you have to go back, do you take a chance? Do you go for something like a Morello Namicon, or do you take the safe route and go for that Seeker's Arm Guard first instead and try and just turtle up in that mid lane and wait out where Zed will be powerful? Because Anarchy in the late game is going to have a lot of problems. One notable change with that Zed is you make one false move in a team fight right now, and there's not a, a simply get out of jail free button on the Death Note any longer. You have to wait that second, and that is going to be long enough for that CC to come in from Bard. Exactly. The big thing about the death mark is it was often you could feign aggression. You could just use that ultimate and then instantly go out and just have no cost. It's completely a free use to just reposition or just force the enemy to, to get into a bad situation. Now you actually are committing for damage, at least for that second, which doesn't sound like a long time, but as Zed players and you are pointing out, it means a lot in the late game when a CC might be laid on instantly. Well, the other factor is, too, that one second gives Luna the opportunity to actually target his ultimate on the shadow so that even if Zed does escape, he runs the risk of getting hit by that tempered fate on the other end of the death mark. So that one second really does mean a whole lot in League of Legends, like you're saying. So to answer your question, the Morellonomicon is completed. I do like this. It gives you much more wave clear. Suddenly now, if Blue's stolen away a second time, you can still stay in lanes. The harass from Bard is very annoying. I think he's just trusting in his exhaust. If the exhaust is enough to allow him to get through the first Zed all in and not die, he'll have the Seeker's Arm Guard by then. And you're not just pigeonholed into this situation where without blue, you're kind of screwed. In fact, Crown was in the same position not one series ago against Goon Zed when he was playing Victor. He actually opted into the straight Zonias before he built CDR or even, I believe, the Death Ray Augment and just ended up. Uh, just having to watch the Zed completely take over the mid lane. So going for the CDR, I think, will benefit him both in the short and the long term. Yeah, and it's, wow, nice trading there, actually, from Luna and Fury. But it's also the risk where if you can't spam your spells enough, enough due to a lack of resources, that the Zed can then roam. Sure. Uh, because you don't have pressure on the mid lane. So 
he's kind of taking a hit and assuming that he's going to be able to outplay that Zed and hoping that his teammates will be there, particularly his jungler, to back him up. Right on schedule, the zone comes through. Eve is going to face check a lot of damage. And there's the tempered fate coming in. It's not going to hit anybody. And there is Mickey already with the first blood into this game. They are camping that red buff. They had their eyes on the prize. And now they're going to follow it up with the dragon. It's really nice roam from Anarchy. Just going into a window that you mentioned, just as you alluded to it, taking advantage of it, picking up a kill, now going to take Dragon as well. Zed overtaking a game. We've only seen it once from Mickey, but it's scary. And Luna right there should not have even been in the bottom lane. They have to accept the fact that, you know, Sangyun and Snowflower are not going to really be able to dive that bottom turret 2v1 uh, against the Corky with two summoners up. So just let Corky with this Sheen and the, the Missile Barrage clear out by himself. Leave him alone. Luna should be the one trying to help out on the map right now to help contain this Zed. Because frankly, Anarchy has gotten so many wards into the enemy jungle without the... Pr okay. Luna's here now. And that's going to cause Mickey to flash over the Raptor wall. For once, didn't have quite enough shadows and had to leave with his tails between. Multiple tails. Yep, I meant just one, but we'll yeah. go with multiple. His tail's up. He's won on this champion. He's won the he's, first game. He's not actually playing Ari this game, Papa Smithy. <sighs> he got an MVP on it, though, <laughs> so it is a notable champion in this pool. Okay. Still may see a dive here. Explosive cast back up. Actually hasn't been spotted by a ward. Here's the engage coming through. Gragas, does he have the ultimate? He does. Pushes away Sungyun. Can he live a lot of damage onto Luna? The last turret hit. Kills him and a one for one with three members committed. Anarchy will take that. Yeah, they definitely will, especially since there's no follow up possible. And they have that knowledge of the jungler. And immediately again, Lyra in the enemy side, rapidly moving through, keeping his eyes on Eve. And wow, that was uh, the missed stun at the beginning of that fight, too, not doing a whole lot of help. Luna really not showing us how good his bard is. Fury. In the meantime, has to Valk out. It's worth noting that there was no extra information presented to Sung. He didn't even have a defensive ward. It was a green ward that Gragas was stepping onto. Coming out of the fog of war, three members, just a mechanical mistake cost them what should have been a very clean kill. Yep. So, and not only that, but Sung Yun got the kill. Meanwhile, it was Eve on the other side. So that actually translates into a healthy advantage there for Song Yu. And he's also going to collect most of this minion wave because Snowflower and Lyra were generous enough just to stall it out before Fury could push it in. Now, one thing working for Samsung is that Fury has the Trinity Force, so it has hit the early power spike very uh, on time. Uh, he can opt in to try and do some tower damage, but of course, if he's just kept in lane the whole time, it won't be a window to really take advantage of that. Two non-resource champions, Zed loves to pick up the uh, blue buff just for the bit of the extra energy regen. And if they can deny the second one away from Azir, that'd be massive. You know, CDR also a big stat sure. on Zed. The more you can get pile in on that death mark, the more advantages it will give you. Anarchy did a lot of good work to deprive the second blue buff at nine minutes away from Azir. But with Gragas prepping it and not just having any ro uh, rotations around that area, Azir should finally pick up the blue buff. He so craves. So one thing we didn't touch on is that while Samsung's very magic heavy this game, and therefore the Age is going to be doing a lot of work, Anarchy is super vulnerable to Frozen Heart stacking. Really, really vulnerable. And come the late game, there aren't going to be that many targets with the number of Zonias on this team. And there we go. Ixu has to ult out. But with the Zonias on Crown, and then a couple Frozen Hearts, or from Eve and perhaps someone else on the team as well, or the Zonias from Kuve, there are going to be a dwindling number of targets that Anarchy is capable of dealing with. And as as bad as the AP stacking is on Samsung, at least they will still have Corky being able to auto attack, whereas Anarchy really has no options. And look, if this was a few patches ago, I would have completely said, yep, the late games are right off, you need a massive advantage or things are done for Anarchy. And that might still be the case as Kuve can't get too cute with multiple members being around Tremor Sense, spotting him out, but no aggression required. But okay, the aggression's still going to happen. We're going to walk through a pink ward. Okay, so there we go. Tempered Fate just as a zoning tool alongside the Equalizer. A couple of minions get put into stasis, but the actual dive is stuffed. 
But the one factor left is that Black Cleaver now exists, Monte yep. Cristo. That could be very apt. Maybe even on someone like Sung Yoon, remember, when you do the, your abilities and get that passive out, the Light Singer passive does apply on hit effects like the Black Cleaver. We'll see if they're clever enough to do that. That requires a lot of open and free auto-attacking as well that Zed's not going to be able to get, so the, the, the choices really are Sang Yoon or Ixu for that one. I would be impressed if they had a, that level of read that they were going to be able to do that. Um, okay, it might be only a fourth or fifth item after the armor stacking becomes apparent, but it should at least be a factor. We've seen multiple players, even on champions like uh, Vayne, just pick up the phage and then work out later where exactly they're going with their build. I hope we see that. That would be very creative. Let's see, 20 chimes there. Poor Luna. Got himself a couple little meeps now. And the warding this game from Samsung also notably better than, than last effort. Anarchy, as always, wonderful with the aggressive wards around the red side. Their warding has been a highlight from these uh, lower ranked teams. The game's still super close. But uh, we're waiting to see really the first big swing come through. The second dragon for Anarchy may be that final first team fight we're looking for late, though. Remember, it was almost kill a minute last game, but 18 minutes, only three kills this game. Yeah, this fight should be pretty good for Samsung. They have a couple armor items now, which will be enormously helpful for them. And they're in that Trinity Force power spike also. He's getting very cute with his back with 10 seconds left to the dragon. He has the exact timer. Anarchy were the ones that picked up this dragon. So Samsung suddenly have a window to pick it up. He had to back Black, uh, play the Rune Kings a massive buy, but full information and excellent warding for Samsung in the dragon area. Yeah, I think they just walk up to it right now. Even Snowflower just recalling right there. Void rush into the bottom side, but they're just really disjointed on this engaged. Mickey not going to be there in time. Very poor control from Anarchy, even though they had that bottom lane pushed up. They had the bottom lane pushed up. They had the exact timer because they took the first one. Either communicating they really didn't want to do it, and in that case, I don't really see what they're getting with the time. The sh getting the shop in could be significant, but maybe this Zed Roam will make it pay off and they can take a turret. But once again, the Pink Ward, he spotted it before, and it hasn't been cleared out. And here we go. Kuve already ulted by Ixu right there. There's an Equalizer. Kuve going to flash. Mickey finds himself on the Equalizer, and that is going to be the death mark popping for the kill. Hard to say whether they had the full information and were going to look for the Dragon for turret trade. They'll definitely get a turret, but there's no wave clear present in mid lane. Sung Yun gets there, has the ultimate available, so can maybe clear out one wave. If they get in and get out, Anarchy might accept the trade. Oh, look at that, too. Corky in the bottom side right now, pushing the wave up to the Tier 2. They really want to commit to this. Eve is capable of disengaging if he needs to. Headbutt Pulverize. Going to stall it out for the moment, but that is... A lot of siege and that in does, the mid lane. I guess the one thing you can say for Anarchy is that does end the laning phase. Now we have both the top and bot lane turrets going down for the respective teams. Maybe now this opens up Zed's split push with his big power spike having hit level 13, having the Blade of the Rune King, even having Hex Drinker. If the split push begins and they are able to do that from just giving up a dragon, that's good for Anarchy. Yeah, it is. They also have the Aegis completed now to help deal with Samsung's poke in some of these siege situations. Sang Yoon seated quite happily in that mid lane so far and starting to push forward. They actually assign Corky into top right now and just leave Azir by himself. Here we might see another dive. Mickey and Lyra working together. Man, that bottom lane has no HP. There is no equalizer yet. It's almost up. Death mark onto Luna. There's the exhaust onto Mickey off her. Mickey getting bounced around, but he pops the. Bard actually getting knocked there by the explosive cask into the the he, range. He actually flashed onto Bard with the E auto attack with the passive. Sung Yoon's going to get caught in the transition though. Trinity Force Corky is a scary proposition. They get the turret and bot. Can Samsung make them pay with the critical mid lane turret though? That's what pays off the one for one trade. Well, they have their two strong siege champions up there right now. Eve going to join only Snowflower on the defense. Easy turret for Samsung. Both teams seem to be getting what they want, Monte Cristo. Zed split pushing. Okay, doesn't have the ultimate available right now, but it's only getting stronger. Boots too, or a bit more armor penetration going to be coming in, depending on who wants to buy. We've noted during Champion Select, there's not really a lot of answers for Mickey. Hell, there's not even a lot of answers for Ixu on his split push. One of them has teleport. 
Going to need some cute bird plays, or the next 10 minutes are going to be super tricky for Samson to navigate without losing multiple turrets. Yeah, this bard play from Luna, too, just a shadow of what we saw before in terms of the accuracy of those ults and his ability to affect that game. He's very on point, and this time around, he's getting caught out a little bit, not hitting a lot of the ults that would be quite helpful in this game. From memory, that was TF Maokai, though. A lot of regular lockdown CC that he could capitalize on. Making plays this game a lot more tricky. You need to hit what is a slow, long-range skill shot. Well, he was hitting it as the primary engage True. onto Jinx on that team. So he certainly had some move speed help from the Sivir, but it was they were relying on the Tempered Fate followed by a TF engage. So it was a bit of a different circumstance where he really was making the big initial play. That's a fair point. Looks like Mickey's delayed his back, probably wants to go back and buy a completed Last Whisper for now. Not really any pressure coming through from Cuvee. Two level advantage, ultimate available again. Seems like it's only a few moments till we'll see another all in attempt in bot. Yeah, this may get dicey. Cuvee still only that arm guard for his personal protection right there. Lyra, uh, well, looks like he's coming down with Snowflower. Maybe they. Think about wrapping around the back Snowflower, just trying to get some wards in so they can safely make this play and chasing off Luna while well, he still has that Oracle's lens up. And they actually delay that entire lens timing. Equalizer used to clear out the wave. Now he's level 13, so Equalizer will be up in the 90 second timer before Dragon. So timing quite fortuitous coming through. How about Paul Von Eve? They don't have the damage grouped just yet, though. So it's just a bit of chip damage onto the Gragas. Yeah, they tried to get a smite in right there, but Eve actually took the Raptors away. Mickey has another wave, and that means another chance without an equalizer to actually make a play. Looks like he just wants to back off. Now, Anarchy have all of that vision control right now. They can just camp around this dragon and wait for Samsung to walk into it. To me, this is similar to their play last game, where they played around dragon with their split push and then took the objective. In this situation, Wherever the Zed is, is probably when they want to apply pressure, because of course, Zed doesn't have teleports. They want to apply pressure around Dragon. They're pushing in bottom. Ekram can respond at any time. Corky and Gragas are top, so it looks like Samsung are abandoning any hope of committing to the Dragon in 40 seconds. But the turret's very low, and Eve is waiting to see what exactly transpires. In fact, Bard's here too. Bard is here. They know Bard is there, however, with the ward in the river, so it's not going to be any kind of surprise. I think they know that Zed was just going to keep on pushing as it is. And so they don't want to take any risk. Can they actually get Ixu? He's going to get out with the devastating charge. Run around the circle, and that's going to be a turret. But I, I, there's still enough time for them to get down to the dragon. You thought things were bad for Rumble before. Last Whisper completed as well. Suddenly there are no viable spit pushing options. And this is going to be an all-in. Well, Crown is here. Can he push it back? He pushes him into the turret right there. There's the equalizer down there. Caught in the turret. And Lyra definitely going to fall. So Crown there with the turnaround kill, but they lose Kuve. And crucially, they lose their Smite to Anarchy. So the one-for-one one trade actually works pretty good for Samsung. Now they can be the ones to threaten damage onto this uh, Dragon. Ix on the top lane, pushing very aggressively, has the Trinity Force completed. In a turret for second Dragon. I like that trade for Anarchy. Oh, uh, well, they're going to take it. As it were, looks like they aren't going to commit to any kind of teleport play. So the turret lead grabbed by Anarchy there, four to three. Okay, so that gold lead starting to look a little bit scary. And yeah, that the armor stacking really can't come fast enough. You see Crown completed his death cap before going for his Zonias. Argument there is he's not expecting to see much of Zed in team fights or in a 1v1 sense anytime soon. So he's committing to having as much power as possible in what should emerge as a 4v4, maybe a late 5v5 if Mickey finally joins it. But committing to the damage, that's the aggressive choice. It's good to see from Crown, but it's risky. It is, it's definitely risky. And here we go, on to Luna, tempered fate. Uh, looks like they're not gonna hit the E on to Luna in the end. And Mickey just pops right back out for the shadow, trading ult for ult. That's another option that you have with Bard, is to use the stasis as a counter to Zed. At this point in the game, before the Zonias are completed, although we see Cuvee has one, before Crown has a Zonias, maybe you have to keep that uh, ultimate just to negate the large impact that Mickey will have in a fight. Uh, the split pushing isn't stopped. They've got this 1-3-1 rolling right now. They have the Trinity Force. 
And they have that strong Zed, so here we go. Gonna try and make a pick onto Luna. There's a stun. Eve getting popped up by Snowflower over Luna, getting low. Fury body blocking for him for the culling. And they will be able to escape thanks to Crown's control over the choke. Mickey gets found out thanks to the pink ward by the blue pit. Are they still gonna keep going? Looks like Magical Journey through the blue buff wall. The Anarchy are rotating smartly. Look who's bottom lane, happy to split push a turret, but uh, Trinity Force Hecarim. It's bought time for QV to shop, so he's coming back with home guards. Ixu's low, so he's probably gonna have to back away. Got a lot of nice items, and QV not interested in using the equalizer or going for any sort of aggressive uh, intent onto the Hecarim. Yeah, it's only gonna get worse too. Anarchy here, they, they're getting close to that righteous glory where they will have that big engage. Will Eve look for the flash explosive cast to make something happen quickly while Mickey's out of position. Mickey's taking a very long route. Three pink wards though. The flanks, although not immediately, but in general, are very well covered by Samsa. Ooh. Crown actually used his passive on that mid lane. I'm not sure about that at this point in time because you want to use that passive turret to sustain your siege. And instead, they're just trying to get they're buying some time for a shop instead with it. That's a long cooldown on the passive to use, a little bit frivolously. It gives time for Zed to basically, under no pressure at all, clear out these pink wards. 300 gold worth of standing investment has been used to hide the flanks and in general to keep them safe from the Zed split push. Doesn't get all of them, but... Uh Mickey's getting his way with things. Crown doesn't have Zonius. And there's the knockback onto Mickey. Mickey's gonna go in. He's exhausted right now. He's running under the turret. Hexdrinker is popped. But that is a shutdown kill for Crown as he has to return within range of the Sand Soldier. Sang Yoon desperately firing away at the mid lane turret to compensate. 40 second death timer at level 16. Can Samsung get another pick? There's no dragon to pick up. All their waves are pushed in. They're gonna try and aggressively push in mid to maybe make them pressure this tier two, but this is what they want to do. The split push focus has been relieved right now. They've got Anarchy zoned out. This is where that that Corky and Azir, if they're left for a second with the turret, it's going to go so fast. Yeah, take an inner Great turret play. for sure. They'd love to get some damage also onto the inhibitor, but that's probably going to be a bridge too far. Pick leads to an objective, so that's at least immediate objective created by Samsung. Well, they got the kill. They stopped the split push. They got the tier two in the mid lane. Hard to ask for more for Samsung under this circumstance. And we're really seeing a very interesting balancing act between the split push and the siege between these two teams. It's fun to watch these two compositions play against each other. Both of them have their natural areas of power. So whichever team plays the best around the power should be advantage. We know that the armor stacking will be very powerful in the late game barring Black Cleaver being itemized by someone. We kind of throw our arms up as to who that someone will be. At this point, with Ixu committing to so much cooldown reduction, he's not going to have the potential to itemize it in. Anarchy have found their way with Barons twice already, and they have a lot of Baron damage. With Mickey showing, it seems like they don't respect the Baron threat of the other four. Can they get the ult off? Bartolt could stop this. Bartolt is not going to stop this. Bard is instead He's going to go back through the magical journey, try and get that stun. He will get it, not before Ixu comes in with the ultimate. Eve isolated right there, has to body slam and cask his way out. Fury trying to kite desperately. Crown flashes over the wall. Mickey's there. Bartolt comes in. Crown is dead to rights, though, as he falls in the back. Purely the rumble has not impacted this fight at all. Going to flash over his Sung Yun. Fury's alive as well. Target selection for Anarchy, not the best. And Rumble's coming in with the equalizer. Yeah, they have to back out right now. So many ults used. And Summoners use Eve coming in for the kill. Fury snakes it with the rocket. And can they be pushed in right now? They lost Mickey. Anarchy is low. The waves are pushed up, though, in their favor, except for the bottom side. But that's not something that Samsung's going to be able to convert on immediately. But it's something super critical is to take the Baron buff away from Mickey. The 1-3-1 one, one with Hecarim and Zed would have been completely outraged. They're looking for the pick. This is a very unorganized fight. It's still a 5v4. You can see, not even telling the back and bot lane is Rumble. So the Tempered Fate is used defensively, but Crown was so low it didn't make, make it mean anything. Eventually, Fu is going to get flashed on by Sung Yoon. So this is very, very even. Mickey's already gone over the wall. Neither of the AD carries can out-duel each other. And Mickey's just caught in the retreat. If he had lived, split pushing Zed yeah. with Baron buff, split pushing Hecarim with Baron buff, with Trinity Force and just AD and attack speed between the two of them, 
there would have been no good options for Samsung. But with one of those down, at least it's not quite as oppressive as it would be otherwise. And guess what? Dragon number three is going to be taken by Samsung in response to that. Everybody starting to move back as well. So two-man Dragon. Mickey has to clear out this very big wave in top. And he's not going to do that quickly. So yeah, Anarchy really overextending into the base right there, ruining the Baron that they had. But you have to wonder about Samsung. That's the second sneaky Baron they've given up today. Yeah, their ward control has just been on another level, has Anarchy's compared to Samsung. Specifically around objectives, Samsung have been letting things slip. They've had good wards in the mid game around Dragon, but they just do not seem to respect the Baron threat of basically every team around 20 to 26 minutes. Yeah, especially since Mickey was actually showing right there. It was a very, very slow Baron. And at a certain point, if you have Bard, just throw your ult into the pit. I mean, if, because they were clicking on it. They were they were using the assist me ping onto the Baron in the black. They could have easily sacrificed a Baron ult just to make that delay work. And they probably would have won the fight afterwards. Kube had his TP up. We've talked about execution heavy comps. For example, the Corky Rumble, Control Dragon or Lose comps before. Crown's going for an execution heavy build. He's going for Void stuff. Still no Zonya. Still the Tempered Fate kind of want to use it on Crown to potentially relieve pressure. Crown is a really juicy target for Mickey who needs no invitation to assassinate people. So it's very interesting to see him just completely give up on the Zonya's priority and go for damage. That's right. Well, looks like Anarchy's going to be happy with taking the last remaining two inner turrets and a little bit of the jungle before they recall. Samsung has to focus on the dragon this game. That's about the only way they can win at this stage. They can they can make the game last longer. Kube will get that Rylize. They'll get the tankiness and the armor perhaps they need to survive these extended team fights. Fury would be doing very well with the QSS at this point. Just cut down the number of targets. Luna even getting a Frozen Heart as well. I think that's a great build for this game in particular on the Bard. So where does this Black Cleaver that we've talked about come from? We've already mentioned that it looks like Ixu just is going to be too over the CDR cap. Probably won't be able to itemize it in. The helicopter would be, the Q of course, spam would be applying the Black Cleaver, but seems like he's not going to be a target. Is it just going to be Mickey? With the BF sword in his itemization, the answer looks like no. Yeah, no Black Cleaver means Samsung going to be even more effective. With that, uh, with that armor stacking. Sixth item from Sangyun, maybe, but QSS always looms as an option that uh, AD carries want to pick up. Some sort of defensive option than just the 400 health from Black Cleaver, but I feel like they need it. Fury and Ixu going out. Fury taking a lot of damage right there, but he's backed up by the Bard. Snowflower here as well. Ixu getting chunked out pretty heavily, though. And there's the Tempered Fate. They want to go in on this, but there's a lot of backup. Crown's there, too. Phosphorus Bomb, Explosive Casket. Ixu's going to get out. But who else may die? Snowflower still CC'd to death. Sanyu getting there late with the calling. Mickey, however, putting a lot of damage down onto this bottom turret. Equalizer there to get the turret to focus on to Mickey instead. They were trying to buy time for Mickey to split push, but crucially, Rumble was both there and has Zonya, so isn't really a dive target unless Mickey significantly outplays him. Luna being cute, looking for the re-engage. Lyra caught, but no real decisive CC to force a fight unless... Unless that Emperor's Divide. Uh, that is a disjointed wall. Yeah, that is a bit questionable right there. Here's a TP coming into the minion. Mickey going to have to back off. Ixu wants to get the engage, wants to get the tower. He will find it, but everyone is there to shut him down. Ixu can't move and is dead, but does get the turret. And he does have enough time to come back for this Baron, but no more TP for a split push. But the strength of the split push was basically the main win condition for Manaki. They committed a lot to be able to pick up. I love the fact that he teleported in with Sheen, of course. From the Trinity Force, the Sheen, the Sheen Block will be enough to take down that turret. They've broken the base. They've been good at engineering uh, windows of power, i.e. playing around an area and then taking the advantage from it, whether it was playing around Baron, then sneaking it in the previous game, playing around Dragon, then picking it up on their retreat. It's very hard to engineer that without the teleport available, like you say, but that particular turret's not going to respawn. So in four minutes, they have a very viable 141, 131 push open to them. Yeah, they certainly do. And Mickey just going back down there, being the thorn in Samsung's side. 
And now he can even just ignore the minion wave and try and backdoor this inhibitor if he so chooses. Still Kuve there. Has some more HP right now for that survivability thanks to the completion of the Rhyalize. So he's not going to be doing quite as badly as he might otherwise. But basically Samsung has to catch Mickey. They definitely have that option. He almost face checks Fury. He's both in a ward he and He doesn't have enough vision out. to be playing like this in the bottom side. That is really risky. And they just doesn't, there hasn't been any wards to relieve pressure from him. Either he needs a warding totem or his team needs to be setting he up has. wards. However, Baron is spawning. So you send multiple members to deal with Mickey. Baron threat is there. I think if you're Samsung right now, you kind of just, there's the Azir uh, turret. Very nice. Clever. Good placement of that. Good timing, right as Mickey's going to hit the turret as well, so he's going to take some damage. And that is a pretty nice answer to the split push right now. Kuve still going to get not popped. Deathmark not going to be enough. Flashes right there. Bit of a duel. Crown coming into that side. Equalizer laid down. There's the poke from the Sand Soldiers. There's the movement of the Soldiers. Is it going to be enough? Hexdrinker popped. Meanwhile, Anarchy finds a fight on the other side. Luna dies. Fury over the wall with the Valkyrie. Eve looking for that escape. Phosphorus Bomb going to deal some damage, and they're going to get out. Crown takes down Mickey, so they really, wow. That was a very intense series of events. They saw two people on the bottom side, so Anarchy wanted to go after the mid. Take down the support, but that's it. Mid laner dead. Once they committed to Crown being that, here's the re-engage, though. In comes Ixu, gets the Terrify, but has to back away. The health bars aren't that high, but Sung Yun's free hitting in the back Crown's line. in there. There's a big Emperor's Divide, and Fury's able to rain rockets in. He's out of mana. Crown still getting a lot of auto attacks off. Nobody can get him in that choke, and he's going to take one more down. Fury with the double kill. There's the, wow, not quite triple Crown with the very late Zonias to stay alive. But what a choke for Azir that to was fight a, in. That was a really good Azir play to stall out this game. Anarchy may be getting too aggressive. Dragon is live. What is Samsung going to do? They're going to have TP Edge once Kuve comes out of death. You see this replay. Wait for the Azir to come in. Finally gets in. The Emperor's Divide denying so much of the play and the Sand Soldiers. When you can set them up and free auto, do massive, massive damage. It was a nice burst from Ixu. But once the uh, Lucian goes down, able to open up space is both Fury and Crown, and very nice play by the two carries from Samsung. Wow. I, just Corky getting so many autos in. Will this dragon be denied? Looks like Fury and Crown are going to say no. Lyra's there. Lyra has smite, but can Lyra actually get it within smite range? The answer is no. Kuve with the TP. Dragon secured number four for Samsung, and the tides are really turning in this game. The, the the completion of that Zonia proved crucial on Crown in that last fight. And they have the wave pushed out. Mickey's nowhere near. They have This is Samsung's time. They have to go for this Baron. He's actually spotted by a ward as Mickey said, so this is definitely the time to rush down Baron. Does give Mickey time to respond, but they need a clear call here, Anarchy. Do they try and pick up the inhibitor? They know that Rumble's teleport is down. He's just used it to try and pick up the fourth dragon. He got that objective successfully. I don't know if an inhibitor for Baron trade is what Anarchy wants to do. So Mickey is going to push up the minion wave. Breaking the base a second time would be a massive thing. But Samsung, this has kind of fortunately been their MO. They just aren't sure what to do. Well, Luna's got a magical journey. They want to make a play. They want to fight before this Baron. There's the Tempered Fate onto the uh, tower. It's going to keep it up, but not do much more than that. That's one less ult they have in a fight. It's going to happen. Anarchy piling on through the mid. And Samsung has to commit to this. They've made a decision now. They're going to chase Anarchy off, but that's another open inhibitor for them to deal with. I think Samsung should have just gone for the, the Baron. The big problem Samsung had is they took a defensive path, and in fact, running down the lane was faster for Hecarim to do, obviously, a very fast champion, but the more direct route was actually open for Anarchy. So they got to the mid lane inhibitor turret first, despite the two and a half second delay from the Tempered Fate, and a late game objective trade predictably goes against Samsung. Yeah, and that is, I mean, if they try for the Baron now, this is very bold. Ixu has TP at the moment. Mickey's not interested. Mickey can take out two inhibitors. Two inhibitors for this Baron is definitely going to be worthwhile. Samsung committing. There's the teleport coming in, and there's the culling scraping across the members of Samsung. It is taken by Samsung, however, but how much will they lose? Mickey's going to say two inhibitors are the price. For this team fight, they take a magical journey. They're going to be able to use the journey. Doesn't quite get oh. the second inhibitor. Could have gone for the he suicide, but he... decides not to. I mm. Tough call. Tough call. 
Now, if Baron was still up, I think you go for it, just because then super minions on the opposite side of the map means that Baron control would have been possible. With Baron dead, how much the super minions pushing oh into bot boy. really add is the question. The big issue here is this composition that Samsung is running is so dangerous in terms of Siege. At them with the Baron pushing up the mid lane, the super minions just aren't going to do anything. And now Mickey has to back off. There's no TP for a flank engage to push them into your tower. There's an Azir turret covering your the, your rear right there. This is a guaranteed almost inhibitor for Samsung unless Anarchy commits and gets a big team fight win. It's what Mickey understands. He knows that QV still doesn't have teleport, so he's just trying to answer inhibitor for inhibitor. But if they get picked, they'll lose the game here, Anarchy, so they have to be so careful. Yeah, this siege is not going to stop either. They still have that tower to fall back to, and Mickey's just going to go for an inhibitor, but this is such a dangerous base race for Anarchy. Samsung, they're relieving pressure. They're oh backing my. away. They've gotten cold feet so many times this game. They have to commit. And Kuve going to get stopped by a smite right there. Meanwhile, Mickey just going to go for it. They have the Bard ultimate. They could have dived the double turrets 5v4, but they chose not to pull off. Still have Tempered Fate. They've lost one Nexus turret. Tempered Fate used now, but it's a little bit late, Samsung. So Samsung just falling apart here. If they were a little bit more decisive, they could win this. Now Anarchy finds themselves with an advantage. Kuve drops Equalizer, but that's not going to be enough. Flash goes down. Crown going to get knocked out of his recall. Fury makes it back to base, but that is it for Crown. Pop. But there's the Zonias. Goodbye. The shot calling from late game Samsung is awful, Monte Cristo. They had tempered fate. It was the world's easiest turret dive. The turrets aren't even a factor. But they just watched the Zed take well, everything. Especially since the next minion wave was going to be a super minion wave for Samsung coming out of the Nexus. Zed was going to have a very hard time cracking the Nexus by himself with the super minion there and with his team all dying. Fury takes a lot of poke damage from Sung Yoon. This is the only inhibitor turret left, and Sung Yoon is super aggressive, gets stunned. Yeah, now Ixu wrap around though. Um, That's um, going to be it. Sung Yoon takes a lot of damage. Fury's still there. Getting a decent amount of autos off. They're actually running pretty low. Anarchy wants to take down the three inhibitors. Snowflower low. Is there enough follow-up? Fury trying to make plays. Flashes for the kill. I don't think that a kill on a support is going to be quite worthwhile, however. With the long death time as Samsung want picks and trying to finish the game, they know that their base... Look, they already lost the game to a, the inhibitors being down last game. They need the picks now to try and finish. Teleport from Rumble to push down the mid lane, or at least to catch whoever is retreating as Lyra dies. Well, they now have the opportunity to get Dragon number five. How much does it Lyra mean? Because Lyra is going to be dead when it spawns. But how much does it mean, Monte Cristo? Does five dragons mean against no inhibitors? They already lost a game trying to fight a dragon against the three inhibitors being down. If any delaying can come through from Anarchy, it's going to be completely moot. And even if they get the buff, they need to win two team fights to win this game. Well, on the plus side for Samsung in this very dark situation, they actually are going to have that inhibitor back up pretty soon. Okay. So they won't have to deal with quite so many super minions, and it will at least have one lane pushing out and some super minion help on their Nexus. Ground's back right now. I mean, this is so dicey, and Samsung just not striking while the iron was hot in this game. The iron wasn't hot, it was burning. It was Jeez. basically a fire and there was smoke coming out of it and they still chose not to do anything about it. Wondered the why pick. their house broke down. The pick right there, Ixu gets found. Is he actually gonna die? Has to use his ult to disengage. Dragon is live. Crown's still in base though. I don't think they can actually feasibly take this. A crown can't really leave the base. We see there's a ward actually at the top inhibitor. So in about 40 seconds time, there'll be that threat of a backdoor as well. Anarchy will be the ones to start the dragon. It would relieve so much pressure for themselves if they could take their second dragon, and much more crucially, deny the fifth from Samsung. Well, they're waiting for Lyra right now. They're waiting for the split push too. We're seeing high style in the Zed mechanics to go for some sort of backdoor. They Inhibitors. have to recall. Inhibitors haven't respond, they have to recall. Eve gonna try for the epic steal. No, doesn't get it. If he dies also, it'll probably be the death knells. PVE is definitely the order of the day for Samsung. Uh, Eve on the retreat. Now he's going to get caught out. Death mark onto Eve. Tempered Fate's going to keep him alive for just a little bit. That's going to deny the death mark. 
Equalizer comes in, Eagle stays alive! Summoner heal, they're gonna fight under an Azir turret, but that is just Anarchy piling through, that's gonna be it. Double kill for Song Yoon, as everyone starts to go down, Luna finds himself magically journeying, not into the afterlife this time, just back to his fountain, and Fury doing what he can, but that's gonna be the 2-0 for Anarchy, and man, Samsung, you gotta work on that late game shot calling because it just wasn't there. They weren't willing to commit to their advantages. So the first 2-0 for Anarchy. They played well, but Samsung had everything ready for them. Just use that tempered fate to just cancel out those first couple of turret hits, win the 5v4 and win the game. Man, the late games. How do these Samsung fans keep coming up, Monte Cristo? Because the heart palpitations are real. Yeah, well, I mean, it's so unfortunate because Samsung legitimately did a good job of getting themselves in a, back in a position where they could win that game, but they got so gun shy, they couldn't pull the trigger when it really mattered. At a certain point, you just have to say, we can win this base race. We have the tools to win this base race and just go for it. And it doesn't get any better than that. Azir, Corky with the Trinity Force, the ability to just burn down these towers. Like you said, you have the tempered fate, you have the...